Good morning everyone, Mike McConville here, Stratford, Ontario, Canada for Stream Tech Workstations. You know, I have this inc incredibly beautiful solid rosewood telly neck on a Strat type body. I don't know if the camera's going to pick us up, I hope it does. We've got quite a bit of a swoop at the top end of the fingerboard here. The truss rod as it stands has a reasonable amount of adjustability on it. I've tensioned it but the truss rod is going to do nothing to this portion of the neck here. Now from the 12th fret up to the last fret, the fingerboard really ramps up. Oftentimes this happens where it takes more than just a repair or adjustment, but a bit of re-engineering to correct the inherent flaws in the design. What we're going to do is we're going to remove the frets from the last one up to the 12th, and then scraping and sanding with those sanding blocks that I send out in your fretting kits, we're going to correct this end of the fingerboard and straighten it out, and then we're going to reinstall the original frets. Now, these are stainless steel frets. I want to bring you in for another view of the top end here, because there's another thing that we need to address that involves a little bit of re-engineering to correct. As you can see, that low E string basically runs right off. <laughs> right off the edge of the neck. So we need to adjust the neck ever so slightly this way so that you can actually play the notes on the extremities, first string and sixth string. We're going to take care of that while we have the neck off or adjust the pocket to allow us to shift it ever so slightly to correct this string alignment issue. So let's get at it. We're taking quite a bit of material off here, so we need to kind of stop and check as we go and make sure that we got enough depth to receive the tang when we put the frets back in. Now you'll see, because the body is in the way, I'm only sanding, oh I can see there was adhesive, so these were glued in, probably super glue. Um, I'm making my way back towards center. I'll come around the other side to deepen that slot so that it's deep enough to receive the tang of the fret when we go to reinstall. Here I can go all the way through. I'm clear of the body here now, so. Yeah, there was definitely some type of a super glue or adhesive. Again, starting from that outside edge and moving to the center of the radius.
Now I've swapped the paper out to 180 on this longer block, but before I even go there, I'm going to work that top edge down a little bit further. I would rather see a bit of fall off at the top end as opposed to having it ramp up. Right now it's basically dead straight from here to here, but I just want to make sure that we get what we need out of this. And uh, like I said, I'd rather, I'd sooner see a little bit of fall off on that top end than to have it ramping up like it was. I have mentioned this in other videos as well, but when you get to that outside edge, if you do your job right, that should be sharp to the touch. The reason you want it sharp to the touch is the underside of the crown. You want it to sit tight against the rosewood, right to the extremity of the outside of the fingerboard. Work that top end down just a little bit further. We have deepened those fret slots with that 22 thou kerf sauce, so that'll give us enough depth to be able to ins reinstall those frets. Here, for anyone that's wondering, how do you follow that radius? Well, like I've said again in so many other videos, the blocks with the leather slip underneath naturally flex and follow whatever radius. Now, I am making my way sort of across the fingerboard, sort of equal amount of strokes. But I'll take out a little radius gauge and demonstrate to you just how close we got this. Doing a little bit of a visual check as I go making sure that we've got enough depth all the way across to reinstall those frets. And it's looking pretty good so far. Yeah. Just in case anyone's wondering how accurate we got that radius. There's the original radius all the way along. Have a look at this. And the point is, I've made it over and over again, I didn't make a real conscious effort to duplicate this radius. It's just the way the blocks are designed, they naturally follow that radius. So we chase to the two outside edges where it's nice and sharp to the touch. Now we're ready to reinstall those frets.
we have enough forgiveness here to kind of line up those strings. So I'm going to use a straight edge and I'm going to line up from the six string slot right up to the center of that saddle and we'll get this neck lined up. Well that definitely helps to be able to tilt it but this end of the neck needs to come over a little bit. With a scraper I can scrape that last inch or so and get that neck to shift ever so slightly to the base side of the socket. I'm going to see if this gives us what we need. Well, that is a huge improvement, but the real acid test now is to check the other side and make sure we still got enough room for that first string. Okay, so this is the wrap up. So after I filled all four holes, I ended up actually attaching just this base side hole where I had scraped the uh, edge of the neck to sort of move it over in the socket. I screwed that into place first and then I put the two outside strings on just to verify before I drilled di diagonally across from that hole to this hole here. And then once that second hole was drilled and I checked it again with the straight edge both sides then I drilled the other two holes. These are a thicker stainless steel uh, screw and I did end up actually uh, uh, countersinking that plate a bit to get these to seat a little better. The one screw here had to be cut back otherwise it would come right through the fingerboard because the back of the body here tapers. In case you ever take the neck off, Jordan, for whatever reason you should never have to take it off. But just remember that this one screw has been cut back because the body is tapered on the back. Anyway, you keep that in mind. The big thing was splitting the difference Really, the fingerboard is a little bit narrow for this bridge spacing. But I have seen this before. My own main guitar for 30 years was a 59 Tele. And it did that too, skirted right even closer than this along the edge of the neck. But I did favor the treble side because I figure much more likely to play these notes than to play these notes on the sixth string. These are all playable, by the way. But uh, it is a little precarious, but doable. So we split the difference side to side. Uh, everything's lined up now. We radius yes, the saddles to match the fingerboard. Of course we had pulled those frets out, corrected the fingerboard, put the new frets in, and I did do a light dress end to end and then buffed it out. So these are the strings that Jordan uses. They're 10 to 52 and I guess he likes these uh, New York XLs. We'll just take a, a quick look at that compensated nut. Well this is what we ended up with. So the low E and A are both negative values. They go past the line of, of the original nut. And both the D and the G, which is pretty normal, go ahead of the original nut slot. The B is actually ahead a little bit, and even the high E is, is ahead a little bit. Yeah, the other thing was I did all that edginess. I did take that out and buffed out those edges. Now I was very careful not to bevel because these strings are so close to the edge. I wanted to make sure that uh, it wasn't going to be an issue for them at any time in the future. Well, it's 100% now. Let's go in and have a lesson. Well, here we go at long last. We've got that string spacing lined up. We can play the notes on both sides of the fingerboard all the way up. As I got into this job, Jordan, I realized why those two knobs were missing because with them on there, you can't wind on the vibrato bar. So I put a little bit of a bend in it so you can kind of curl your hand around it. It's very accessible now. So the nice thing is now when you don't want it, I just back it out of the way here. And then when you want it, you just kind of bring it around and it's there to use. Anyway, hope you're happy with that. Certainly a lot better than uh, going through a major fiasco every time you want to put it on or take it off. This way you can leave it in the case with it on, no problem. And of course we've got that compensated nut. And as you saw earlier, we pulled out those top frets, 
corrected the fingerboard. After going through that whole process, I did a light fret dress end to end, and I very carefully buffed the outside edges to get rid of that sharpness that, uh, that was there. So these are 10 to 52 strings tuned to E flat. So this is the neck pickup. <laughs> There's both pickups. Bridge pickup. C sharp minor chord progression that I looped. It's, it's an E major, but it briefly modulates the C sharp minor for a few bars. Mm -hmm. 